Hey guys, it's Django here. I've had a request to do a video on um, creating a DJ mix inside Reaper. There are two approaches you could take to doing this. Let's assume your tracks are on one fixed BPM, or rather each track has a fixed sort of BPM throughout, 120 or 130 or whatever. You could sync them to the grid in Reaper and then set your time base. If I right click the tracks, set time base to beats, position, length, and rate. This means that when you change the tempo, the samples will adapt to the new tempo. The one caveat is, if you want to change the tempo, you should put a slice in that sample where your tempo change happens so that the new slice is at the new tempo. The other method which is how I've usually done it, is to just ignore Reaper's tempo altogether. So I'm going to start with that because it's, in my opinion, the simplest, but both methods have their merits. So I've pulled in a track of mine, just dragged it in from Windows. I'm completely ignoring the, the grid. So let's just hear it. Intro. Cool, so let's assume we want to mix out of this track somewhere near the end. So let's say we want to start mixing in a new track from this sort of bar. So what I'll do is use the tab button to tab to the transient of that kick. Um, and then I'm going to slice it. Uh, the reason for this is in your snap settings, you can have snap media items to media items on nearby tracks up to one track away. In my case, I've set it to one track. So what this means is with snap on, if I'm moving the next sample, in fact, we can pull it in. Um, this is going to sync right now, snap is off. But if I turn snap on, it's going to snap to, snap off, snap to my cursor, snap to the grid lines, and snap to media items on nearby tracks. So, but first, you can already see they're not lining up, so you could eyeball it. Um, and then, yeah, that looks pretty good. What I might just do is rely on its transient detection because we're gonna use it later, so I might as well just trust it for now and, until it serves me badly. So now what I would do well, firstly, you can just quickly listen. You can already hear they're out of time. So what I would do is count four bars of the new track. One, two, three, four, and put the cursor at the end of four. Around here, I'm gonna turn snap off, and I'm gonna hit tab to go to the transient. And I'm just going to slice it and delete the rest for now because we can still pull it out again if we need it. And then I'm going to do the same on the other track, find four bars. Two, three, four. Cool. So I'm going to tab to that point, make another slice. And now I'm going to grab the edge of this and turn snap on and it's going to jump to that point. So now I can pull out the rest of this file and it should stay in sync. Now to make it more pleasant, we might want to have the lows only come in partway through the mix. So I've got a high pass here. If you just click on it once, you don't need to move it and go parameter, it's now the last touched parameter in this list, show track envelope. So now we can automate it. We want the base to come in here. Thereabouts. So I'm just going to make a selection from that point, zoom out, and 
pi-pass it. What I did there, um, there's a mouse modifier to uh, add points and make a new set of automation points for just that selection. You can also use the slider over here. So let's have a quick listen. Cool, and let's hear it in context. Now I might also want to automate the volume. Cool, so we've done our first mix. So now if I want to get the track back up to its original speed, what I might do, I will slice it again. Sorry, that was a warp marker. And let's go with that, with a different tempo for a few bars. And I'll slice it again here. Um, right, so now on this slice, let's see what the playback rate is. So let's change the playback rate to be a bit closer to original speed. Let's go 8, 9, 5. Now it's playing back a little bit faster. And you can see that because the next waveform was, was originally here and now it's starting there. So I'm gonna tab there, cut that off, turn snap on, so it snaps back to the previous item. And now for the rest of the song, we can play it at its original speed, which is 1.0. So now we've had a mix. Then it plays a little faster. And now it plays at original speed. And it was pretty smooth transition because the tempos were only two BPM apart. I just happened to know the one is 118, the first one, and this one was 120. So yeah, that is how you would do it, completely ignoring tempo. The other method, for this would be to sync everything to the tempo and then automate the tempo. This might be handy if you want to sync other things to it later on, like you want to play keyboard or arpeggios or sh like add, a, add in other loops to augment your mix. So I'm going to start again. I'm going to go with four bars. This time we are listening to the tempo. So let's go to the beginning. Three, four, one. Okay, so I'm going <coughs> to chop it at this point, delete the rest. Um, I must do the same at the beginning, actually, because there's a little space before the first kick, so I'll tab to that, trim it off, and move it to the beginning. So now let's turn the, the metronome on. We can actually adjust the metronome volume in here if you right click on it. I'm just gonna turn it nice and loud. So we can hear the tempo is different from the metronome. So there's the end of four bars. We can see on my grid at the moment, it's on bar, bar size. Um, if you grab, once again, grab the end of it, you hold your mouse modifier to get that little stretch handle and just put it onto the grid. So now it'll be in sync with the tempo. Cool.
cool. So now we can play the whole track in its entirety. Um, and then at the end, we'll mix into something else. We might want to see the, the tempo wasn't quite right. So I'm gonna to tab to this transient, same thing. Same thing, slice it, trim it to the, turn snap on, trim it to the, uh, stretch it rather to the end of that grid line. And so now the track should be totally in sync with the grid all the way through. So let's pull in our next track. Once again, we tab to the, the transient and I've used a, another shortcut there. Um, I used an SWS extensions action. Now, once again, we listen to, we can solo this track and it's not on the grid. So that was four bars, tab to that point and synchronize it with the tempo. Now, let's once again do our little high pass. So we've done another mix, but now everything's synced to the tempo. However, now if we want to automate the tempo, let's go show master track. And then your icon might look a little similar, but a little different in your default theme to get to the automation envelopes. So let's make the tempo map visible. Now on the master track, we can see the tempo map. So this first point here, you'll see that the tempo was 122. Let us attempt to change the tempo. I'm just going to move the thing. Now, something interesting has happened. That point, that file has moved further, but this file hasn't changed at all. And this file hasn't stretched at all. So let's undo that. The key is your track time base. So let's select both tracks, set track time base to beats, position, length, and rate. What this will do is sync the beginning and end and speed of the file to your tempo. Position only is handy for drums and cymbals and that sort of thing that you might have sequenced an individual hit and you don't want it to stretch um, when you change the tempo because it's a single drum hit. I find it, I do sometimes program drums using that mode. So let's set it to this for now, since we're gonna change the tempo and we want the, the, the waveforms to follow. So now let's, you can also right click on it, set point value and you can change the BPM. So let's go 118 BPM. And now you'll notice that it has actually changed the waveform. We can make it more extreme. Let's just slow it right down. And you'll hear that it's still in sync with the tempo. However, if you change the tempo mid file, it changes the speed of the file to that new tempo and doesn't, um, doesn't change what it was before. 
So what we have to actually do is create a slice at that point. And let's put the marker on the grid. And now, So yeah, you just need to put a slice wherever you change the tempo. And if you wanna do gradual tempo changes, you'll just have to put more slices. And again, you can set the value of the points. So let's set this one to 118. And I'll get rid of that one. So if you wanna check your new tempo against the original tempo, there isn't really a way to do that in Reaper except to press F2 on the file and check uh, this is your media item properties. You can also get to it via right click item properties. And over here, you'll see the playback rate. So right now it's 1.0, which means it's playing at its original speed. So the original file was 118 BPM. We change the BPM. F2, now you'll see the rate has changed. So it's playing at a different speed. We can see that it's point something of its original speed. Undo. Let's say that during this mix, we want to speed up the tempo. So let's say we want to change the tempo incrementally a bit here. So I'll slice both audio files so that they adapt to the new tempo. Add in a point, set the point value, Let's go 119. A little bit faster. And then let's say at this point, we want it to be full speed. So we add another point. I'm holding shift by the way, to get that, to be able to add points um, when I click. Now let's set this point value to 120. And there we have it. We can now change the tempo of the files, but the easiest might just be to start with one tempo and grid all your tracks to that tempo. Now, if we look at this playback rate, by the way, you'll see that it's a little slower than its original speed. And when it's 120, you'll see that it's very close to its original speed. Um, this track actually is at 120. So what we could just do is put, like manually change the playback rate to one. And now it'll play back at original tempo. And it should still be in time. I hope you found that useful. That is two methods for creating a DJ mix inside of Reaper. By the way, you don't necessarily need to use this tempo map. Um, we don't need it visible necessarily. You can see the tempo up above your ruler and you can add points by insert perhaps, insert tempo time signature change marker. And that's where you would add a different tempo at that cursor position. Hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. Cheers.